Amen. Do we have some grateful people, some people that know that God has been good and we are so thankful for everything that God has done. Amen. Amen. Oh, I invite you, if you have your scriptures, if you have your phone, to turn with me to Ephesians 2.10. And if you take you too long, you might miss it. We are one verse scripture, one verse sermon today. Amen. All right. I'll be reading Ephesians 2.10. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. Mm -hmm. For we are God's own handiwork, God's workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, that we should walk in them, living the good life which God Rearranged and made ready for us to live. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. Almighty and gracious God, we come in this moment wanting to be reminded of exactly who you are and how you have made us. We ask you to take this moment that we call preaching and speak to heart, speak to mind, speak to circumstances and situations. Let us walk out of this place. Let us move out of the room where we are watching us on our phone or watching on our TV. Let us move from this moment being reminded that you are a good and perfect God. Yeah. And you have wanted to use your people and your plans for the world. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, I invite all God's people everywhere to say amen. Amen. All right. So I need some help this morning. I need you to say out loud, I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. Don't forget to say one more time. I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. Now, if you got your cell phone, you know how to take a selfie. Take your cell phone out. I'm up to you. <laughs> and this is the if you know how. It's not it's okay, but if you know how to use a cell phone, you have to put it on selfie mode. And those who don't, if you got a neighbor, you look at your neighbor. And I want you to take a picture of yourself saying, I am God's masterpiece. <laughs> I, I, you say it like you mean it, man. This is a moment that we have to take note of. Because it's going to be some days you're not going to feel like God's masterpiece. And you can look back at your picture and say, you know what? I am God's masterpiece. Amen. <laughs> now, what does it mean to be God's handiwork, God's masterpiece? When we consider the stars in the sky, the mountains and the trees, we know that we have seen God. When we experience peace like a river or joy that overflows, we know God. Am I right about it? When we encounter human beings, many of us then know frustration and pain. Uh -huh. We know chaos and confusion when we encounter humanity. We never know what we're going to get. Sometimes we may get a smile. Mm -hmm. Other days we might get a snarl. I tell you all the time, I don't even know when I live alone, who I'm going to wake up with in the morning. <laughs> what kind of attitude I'm going to have. Well, and I slept by myself last night. <laughs> and I'm not saying that humans are bad. However, I'm saying that we as humans are unpredictable. And it's our human unpredictability that makes things hard. Right. That is why one of the highest compliments is being seen as God's handyman, handiwork, God's masterpiece, proof of God's presence here on this earth. Now when Paul or whomever wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus, he was not writing a nasty gram, because we know Paul was favor, famous for his nasty grams, right? He's, <laughs> get yourself straight. Y'all ain't doing it right. I'm going to come down if y'all don't get it right this time kind of things. But these writings are to encourage the people. They're to encourage us, to remind us, and to give us the confidence that we need to walk as God's masterpiece. If you don't know what our thought and theme for today is, I am God's masterpiece. If we look at some of those other epistles or other letters that are written to other churches, we learn what not to do. We learn what not to think, what not to say. But Ephesians is the book you turn to when you want to learn what to do and how to be and how to understand some things that are happening around you. Right. This time, our brother Paul, he's not making some long, brilliant, confusing, uh, slightly confusing argument and counter argument, you know, the good that I would do, that I do not. Mm -hmm. Now, this ain't that kind of letter. This Paul 
one saying whether he's right me loud and proud. He's saying, you are on the right path. Keep going. Keep trying. Keep smiling. You got this, and God has you. So today, if you're wondering, if you're of your word that you're not good enough, that you don't know what life holds for you next, that you are not worthy, that you not even, like, you know, if God really knew what you did yesterday, you, you might not wake up tomorrow. If that, if any of that is your story, then to this morning, I need you to know that you are still, in fact, God's masterpiece. Today we got one goal and one goal only, to celebrate and walk in the fact that we are the handiwork, the masterpieces of God. Yes, me and you, both of us, no matter how young or how old, no matter how you woke up this morning, no matter if you woke up with aches and pains or you jumped right out of the bed, whether you looked in the mirror this morning, you were looking at God's masterpiece, and God's masterpiece was looking back at you. The problem is not that we have to become. The problem, I think, is that we don't know that we are. This scripture starts off with saying, for we are. That's a definite, that's declarative, that is factual. We are. This morning, we're going to learn what it means to walk like God's masterpiece, to talk like God's masterpiece. So even when you just sit in your car going down right the street, you are rolling down the street as God's masterpiece. In the Greek, the, Greek, the word is more like workmanship. But in English, it sounds like our word for poem. It refers to what is composed or constructed. It was used, the word they used in Greek was used to refer to any finished work of art, whether it was a statue or a song or a poem or a painting. Now, one of my favorite phases used to be, God loves us just how we are, but God loves us too much to leave us like we were. Uh. But when I read this text, what I realize is God loves us just like we are, and God will help us to get to where else it is we think we ought to be. But God has already placed inside of each and every one of us the masterpiece that God created you in mind for. It's been said once that Michelangelo, once when he was asked what he was doing as he was chipping away at this shapeless rock, he says, I'm liberating an angel from the stone. Well, this morning, God wants us all to be liberated from our stones. Now, I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know if it's fear or age, complacency, or just nobody ever told you you were God's masterpiece before. Maybe no one ever told you that you were designed when you were in your mother's womb to be God's masterpiece. Well, I'm so grateful you lost you today. I'm so grateful you decided to worship this morning, that you turned on Zoom, that you slid on the Facebook, because today you need to know that you are God's masterpiece. Before a good work is ever done, before you ever speak a word, before Zion starts to run around this church, he is already God's masterpiece. Like Maya Angelou liberating the angel from the stone, we just need to be liberated from the things that keep us enshrined. The doubt, the shame, the fear, the uncertainty. Soak up these scriptures. Here's what it says. Deuteronomy 32 and 6 says, Is God not your God? Uh -huh. Your creator who made you and formed you? Psalm 103 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us, and we are God's. Isaiah 43 and 21 says, The people that I formed for myself, they may proclaim my praise. And then Isaiah 16 20, 21 says, The work of my hands for the display of my splendor. God takes delight in you. God takes delight in me because we reflect God's image. God breaks out in song. The angels start to do or do dance whenever God thinks of each and every one of us. And because we have the capacity to display God's splendor as God's masterpiece, the question is, will you? Will you realize that you are God's masterpiece and walk in it? Will you live in it and lean into it? Will you come out of the stone that has encapsulated your heart and your life and fully realize who and whose you are? 
to walk confidently as the masterpiece of God means that first, God's masterpiece has to know that she or he or they is not God. God's masterpiece knows that they or she or he is not God. I found the people who went to the cheap seats in the back. God's masterpiece knows that he, she, or they is not God. God's masterpiece is God's hands, God's feet, God's mouthpiece in the world today. It is not God, but it is a reflection of God. It is a piece of all the goodness, of the graciousness and mercifulness of God in human form. We have to know that it's not me, but it's we. For we are. The scripture says, for we are. It's a group effort. So it's not just knowing that it's God. It's also knowing that it's you and it's me. I look better when I'm walking beside Dwayne. I preach better when Dwayne is sitting at the piano and saying amen. I, I, I feel better on Sunday mornings when Tom comes and sticks his head in his office and says, don't forget this announcement now. Amen. It's about we. To be the masterpiece of God, all of us are really needed. We each have a role, and let me actually, let me say this. We each have roles, S, and parts to play. There are no low ranges. We are co-laborers, co-workers with God, with Christ. And I know you often talk about salvation being personal, you know. Um, just, if you just know the Lord and get to heaven. But more importantly, it's also communal. We are saved not just to go to heaven when we die, but to do some stuff while we are still alive. If there is still breath in your body and movement in any part of you, then God still has something for you to do. Right. We are saved not just for heaven when we die, but to make a huge difference here on earth. When we learn to show up and walk as God's masterpiece, then the things in the world around us begin to shift. And all of these small shifts create the change the world needs. Now, I don't know if you know this, but they say before there's an earthquake, right. there's little tremors. Mm -hmm. Before there's an earthquake, they said little plates start shifting. Can you imagine if the people of God all started to shift a little bit? Uh -huh. Just started to do a little bit more of what God is asking for us to do as the people of God. How the world might start to be shaken up. Mm -hmm. How things might start to change. Maybe they won't change over there, but they can change right in your neighborhood. They can change right in your home. And when they start there, then it does start to change the neighborhood. Then it starts to change the city. Then it starts to change the country. Les Brown once said, the graveyard is the richest place on earth. Because he said, it's there, you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled. The books that were never written. Mm -hmm. The songs that were never sung. The inventions that were never shared. The cures that were never discovered. All because someone was too afraid to take the first step. Keep with the problem or be determined to carry out their dream. Now allow me to repurpose his quote and say, the Christian graveyard is the saddest place on earth because it is full of people who had the power and the opportunity to change the world, but they didn't. This emphasis on God and us takes us right back to Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning, God created. That means when God had the first thought of the world, God thought of you and me. Uh -huh. It means that from the beginning, we were created to be God's masterpiece. You and God's image have value, have worth, have dignity. We just need to be released. We just have to know who we are and whose we are. Don't you know you are an original one of a kind of there is nobody else that is you? Nobody else can sing the wrong note as good as I can sing the wrong note. Can't nobody else move a little offbeat like I can move a little offbeat. Last week, I told you it was my funeral weekend. And the funeral I went to on Saturday was a dear church friend of mine. And the stories they always talked about was he would always clap just a little bit and rock a little bit offbeat. No matter what the beat was, 
And so when somebody was giving a trip, they said, you know, what we realized is that it wasn't that he was off, it was off beat. Uh -huh. He was filling in the gap. He was filling in the quiet place. Uh -huh. He was filling the place where God needed a joyful noise to be made. Can you imagine that no matter how unique, whatever your eccentricities are, whatever your little quirks are, whatever the things that makes you different, that your mama and daddy even look at you like, where did they get that from? It's something special that God gave just for you to be used out in the world. God's masterpiece. We bear the signs and symbols of a holy God. And what is that sign? What is the symbol of a holy God? It's love. Pure love. Love that lifted up, bowed down heads, and warm troubled hearts. Love that makes you do right when you want to do wrong. <laughs> love, God's love, does no harm. Love is patient. Love is kind. You've heard those words before. They will know we are Christians by our love. That's more than a song. That's the way we ought to live. Mm -hmm. And how do we who desire to have the confidence that we are God's masterpiece get that kind of love? Mm -hmm. We give it. Now that doesn't mean we are perfect. This ain't about being perfect. This is not about doing everything right. It is about bathing ourselves, walking and talking, and even making mistakes in the name of the love of God. No, it's going to take time, a transition even, because the scripture says, for we are God's handiwork, God's masterpiece, created in Christ. And really, you go like, recreated. Because the more we walk with Christ, the more we journey with God, the more we journey together, the more we're being recreated. Right. The more our hearts and our minds are being transformed and renewed, if you want to be. Uh -huh. Becoming a new creature in Christ means that the Holy Spirit is at home in our hearts and our minds, changing and rearranging our way of being. Mm. If you've been at church any length of time and you find yourself still the same, then I invite you to start asking God to help you to have an encounter. Mm -hmm. To meet and allow the Holy Spirit to do the Holy Spirit's work within you. And if you know, I'm not being specific because I don't know what the Holy Spirit is going to do with you. Some days I ain't sure what the Holy Spirit is doing with me. But I know that I'm better than I used to be yesterday. Mm -hmm. That I'm different than I used to be before. <laughs> to walk confidently, last thing, as God's masterpiece. Mm -hmm. We must know that it's waiting on us. Now, now, what is waiting on us? The good works that God has already set aside and pre-planned. What good works that God has for us? Sometimes we get so caught up. I call it paralysis mm -hmm. by analysis. Lord, what is it you want me to do? Am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to say that? Then we end up sitting still and doing nothing. The good works come out of our being. It ain't about what you do. It's about who you are in the inside, who God is working with you. If we are first not new creatures in Christ or being recreated in Christ daily, then what we do is not good works. Now, you might say good works. Now, I heard of that. But I also heard about good deeds. Now, let me just tell you the truth. Good works are bigger than good deeds. Good works are good deeds on steroids. Good deeds say, I did this. Good work says, nothing but God brought us this far. Good deeds says, they ought to be thankful I showed up this Sunday. Good work says, I'm so grateful that God let me get here this Sunday. Good work says, didn't you, good deeds say, didn't you see me at the food drive yesterday? Good deeds says, God, wherever you want me to serve, I'm showing up. God says, good deed says, I hope I did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Good works have swag and confidence that God already lined this up, so this shall be done. Mm -hmm. What are the good works and what do they do? What are the good works of God and what do they do? If you don't know, then you ask God to show you, and like, Lord, show me how to do good works. Show me the good works that you already have. Pre Don't you know the stuff God already has for you to do with your man? Man, God is just waiting for you to walk in it. God is waiting for you to say, "Hey, I'm ready," or oh, "I'm not ready, but I'm here." Mm -hmm. I believe the text says the good work, the world because of good works, the world knows that God is alive. 
and still at work in the world today because of God's masterpiece. People will serve. I got to ask, I think this week, why do people serve? Now, we don't really have this big, big problem in Luther Rice, but many churches where they have, you know, people come on thousands on Sunday, and then 15 show up on Wednesday. <laughs> right, Dick the first note say, yep. It says, why don't some people serve? And so a lot of responses came in my head, came right to the top. Well, they don't tell them what to do. The people that's there is nasty when they show up. Um, it ain't enough to do. It's too much to do. They don't have time. They got kids. They got husbands. They in school. But then the answer that really came out when I sat and fought with that thing, I didn't say anything because I'm learning to keep my mouth shut, man, and just listen. It said, people will serve when they fall more deeply in love with the master. The masterpiece shows itself as God's own masterpiece when the masterpiece spends time with the master. As we talked though, it became more clear that our being is what leads to the doing. Mm -hmm. It's not the other way around. It's not that if you do right, then the being comes. It is out of our closeness, out of our relationship, out of our, our fellowship with God and with one another that we start to do the good works. Start to, the good works are revealed through us. What we do must flow from who we are. Friends, we must understand who we are before we even do a thing. The motivation for ministry, for service, must be love for the master. My prayer is that you leave today knowing who you really are, that you are God's masterpiece. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we are praying right now that you will allow us to leave this space, to leave this moment. God, to even before we turn off our iPads and computers and TVs, that we will know without a shadow of a doubt that we are your masterpiece. We love you, we thank you, we adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the first step, if you want to know what it means to be God's masterpiece, to walk with that swag, that step to know that it ain't just something you're saying, but it's the way that you're living, then the first step is to give your heart, to make a confession within your heart, your mind, and your soul. And old Baptist will say, give your heart to Jesus and your hand to the preacher. It is to make that declaration and say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I want to be recreated every day with you. So now is the time. This moment is just for you. If you want to make that declaration, if you want to make a public commitment to journeying with God, with Jesus Christ, if you want to say, I believe Jesus, I believe Jesus, that you gave your life just for me, then now is the time in today's day, whether it's Sunday morning at 52, or it's Tuesday at 3 and you're watching this. It is your time. It is your time to make a decision for how you want to live and be as God has already created you to live and be. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Maybe you want to be baptized. You want to make that public declaration Today is your day, and now is your time. I invite you, if you're here in the sanctuary, just lift your hand. You can come up forward. If you are worshiping virtually, you can let us know in the chat. You can slide into our DMs. You can email us at deacons with an S at luthericechurch.org. We got many different ways because we will be so excited to walk with you, to usher you into new relationships into a recreated relationship with Jesus Christ. He has loved you before you are a twinkle in your daddy's eye. That's the Jesus. That's the God we offer to each and every one of you.